So let's talk about nuts and seeds here for a minute. Because I'm saying that all the studies that have high credence, which means they follow people for decades and look at hard endpoints, like what they died of and how what age they died at. And all the studies tracking people's consumption of nuts and seeds shows that the more nuts and seeds they eat, the longer they live. And the less they eat, the shorter. So we're going on still talking about nuts and seeds here. And we're saying that when the data is investigated into how nuts and seeds have such a radical effect of reducing heart attack risk, it's because they stabilize the heart against the rhythm. And the myocytes need fat in the heart to not get easily inflamed. They can get inflamed from lack of oxygen or lack of nutrients. But these fats, so in the physician's health studies example, which followed with the 20,000 physicians for more than two decades now, they showed a 60% reduction in sudden cardiac death. Sudden cardiac death was the type of death caused by a cardiac arrhythmia, irregular heartbeat. Eating of nuts and seeds prevents the irregular heartbeats. Compared to eating a low-fat diet, which is not good for you, or a high-fat diet with oils or animal fat, which is not good for you. What did watch do for the nuts? That's a good question. Somebody else had a question, I had a view on too. But the, the question <laughs> is, what's the portion of nuts and seeds the person could eat to maximize longevity? And obviously it's different for different people, but let's go over the study, okay? Because the, one of the best studies on that is the Seventh-day Adventist Health Study 2, which is coming up on the slide. I'll show it to you. Now, I'll look into it in one second. It says uh, nuts and seeds also suck out LDL cholesterol, lower your LDL, because the sterols and stanols that hold on to fat, that hold the fat in nuts and seeds in these packages, are fat magnets that pull fat into the toilet bowl. So you need 100 calories for nuts and seeds, you don't want to get 100 calories in, because the fat goes into the toilet. It is sucked onto these fat magnets that are holding it. But the fat magnets, the sterols and stanols and fibers in nuts and seeds that are sucking out to the fat, sub-oxidized LDL, out of the bloodstream is it a toilet. The bad actor, the bad actor that causes heart disease, oxidized LDL, is sunk out of the body and into the bloodstream. So lowering your LDL cholesterol, reducing plaque and increasing vascular and elasticity, blood vessel movement. So the we're saying here that at one certain the day, here's a meta-analysis of all the measured studies done on it, showing that the cause overall, and all these studies corroborate each other. Tremendous corroboration. That means when a person in one part, one um, group of researchers in one part of the world doing a similar study on nuts and seeds in another part of the world, they also the same things. Tremendous corroboration, increasing the credence value of these studies, showing it's definitive science. It's not a hypothesis. We know that the consumption of nuts and seeds has a radical benefit of extending the lifespan with about a 30% reduction of cancer and about a 40% reduction in bar Texas facilitates the absorption of phytochemicals and antioxidants in vegetables too by having enough to see the same meal. And the Seventh day Adventist Health Study 2 ans answers that question you just asked. Because it divided the people who eat left and seeds into five quintiles of how much they ate. And they found that, and by the way, this study has so much credence and is so such an important study in the history of human of nutritional science because Seventh day Adventists here in California are peoples that generally don't smoke, don't drink alcohol a lot, and they don't eat a lot of animal products. They're told by their religious leaders to reduce animal product consumption and eat a lot of vegetables and live a healthy life and exercise and live a healthy life. And because of that, they have cohorts of different sexes, different ages, different races, and some of them are vegans, some of them are near vegans, some of them have to eat some fish, some of them eat a little bit of meat, some of them eat. So they have a lot of different ranges to see the pattern of the whole different types of diets that could be eating in that range of closer to a healthy diet. Whereas if you study a standard American diet, they're all eating the same, they're all eating so much junk food, it's hard to see the very which change one thing to see much difference in what they're doing because they're doing so many things that are bad, you can't figure out what's good and what's bad. <laughs> Following? So what they found was in all cohorts, even the vegans and the non-vegans, that in all cohorts that benefits from eating nuts and seeds, and that even the people who were vegans who were not eating nuts and seeds did not live as long as the near vegans and vegetarians who eat nuts and seeds. Did you follow that? Yeah. And that, comparing the lowest quintile, here's the answer to your question, 
the lowest quintile was less than half an ounce of nuts and seeds, and the highest quintile was eating an ounce and a half or more per day. And comparing the lowest quintile with the highest quintile, who had a 40% different in cardiovascular death in all, in all colds. Which means that, like at our retreat, we have mostly overweight people there. I have like 15 people there now, and one person is there. He's, one guy is there, he's thin, he's not going to lose weight. He's eating more, but everybody else is eating about a half an ounce of nuts and seeds with every meal because they're desirous of weight loss. They're getting an ounce and a half a day minimum. Whereas people might be trying to not lose weight by eating an ounce with each meal. But we know that it's a good question. Well, even when you try to lose weight, we don't drop the nuts and seeds lower than a, an ounce and a half per day or an ounce or a half an ounce per each meal. We eat two meal objects. And even benefits for weight loss. Those questions. Yeah. Um, just, it, I, I'd be evident that it's starting to ask if they're raw. Yes. Okay. Makes a difference if they're raw. The answer to that question is that um, that nuts and seeds, when they're roasted too much, could lose their protein and can lose the protein absorbability and lose some new beneficial nutrients that are that are biological activity when you cook them too much. But you can lightly toast them, like lightly toasted almonds, light toasted sesame seeds, to enhance the flavor without losing the benefits. But why that's because you toast them yourselves. But if they commercially toasted them, they roast them, and they form the, the, the brown to the whole nut. And you do it yourself, you just do it the outside, it's a little tinge of color, you enhance the flavor a little bit, you toast the sesame seeds with the almonds. So yes, you can toast them and roast them, because you're going to do a lighter job of it, but don't buy commercially roast the whole nut. So here's a few studies. Here's a couple of studies that one that I published. One study at the top, 2020. The name of the study is Nuts and Seeds for Heart Disease Prevention, and published in the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention. Myself and Dr. Ferrari. Um, over 50 references to review the science, documenting the benefits of nuts and seeds to prevent heart attacks, strokes, and cardiac arrhythmias, and to extend lifespan of people with heart disease. And I published that study because there's some other People saying other things without good, without sufficient evidence to justify their review points. And if this is, I'm putting this slide up there, in case you want to review that reference and see the 50 references I've referred to. And then here's a study that published in 2015, improved cardiovascular parameters with mutually adjusted metric diet style in the American Journal of Lifestyle Medicine, showed that the reversal of high blood pressure cases in more than 400 individuals, actually more than 450 people with high blood pressure, and illustrative cases where people with advanced heart disease, even with even with the degrees of heart um, of lower ejection fractions, and as people who are thought they would not survive that long, ready to recover heart function and get well again. The illustrative cases showing the reversal of heart disease with a nutritarian diet, which includes the consumption of nuts and seeds, you know. A proper and judicious nut. And here's a predicate study comparing olive oil to not a seed consumption. The interesting part of the present, the interesting part of the precedence of the olive oil, shows that olive oil has benefits when compared to other sources of fat, like animal fats or other oils or, you know, margarine or, you know, the more butter. So when people use olive oil, as a source of fat, they do get benefits of reduction of heart disease by about 50%. However, not as much as nuts and seeds. In the Premovit study, the longest lifespan and the lowest of heart disease, 60% lower, in fact, were people in the study who were eating nuts and seeds before the study started and were randomized to the group that would both eat nuts and seeds. Did you follow that? Because you have Versus the people who are eating olive oil and randomized to eat nuts and seeds, or eating nuts and seeds and randomized to eat olive oil, that, that the most longevity occurred with people who are already nut and seed eaters who were then told to stay eating nuts and seeds at the most life. So even though olive oil is better than butter, it's still, you know, even the studies on meat, these people advocating meat will say, you know, look at this study. It shows that people cut back on meat. They didn't live longer. The amount of debt and amount of longevity was insignificant. Yeah, of course. Because they compare the cut back on meat, they just eat more chicken, and they eat more fish, they eat more eggs, they eat more dairy products. They didn't eat beans and nuts. <laughs> so let's go let's isolate the studies, not for people who eat more chicken instead of meat. 
but let's talk so that people eat more nuts instead of meat, or eat more beans instead of meat, then what do you see? Well, they'll look at those guys, that's. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a stuff to think it's too much. That's what it seems. Well, right. you, you, let you answer that question to me. You tell me the answer to that. Because here I told you very at the beginning here about the most profound and proven methodology of slow aging is moderate caloric restriction and keeping your body fat low, keeping your muscle fat ratio high, and under eat and slightly under shooting your calories. Because remember, um, I'd have fifteen hundred calories a day if my days are about off me right now. Now what if I eat fourteen hundred calories a day? What if I undershoot my hundred calories a day? Am I gonna drop from one fifty to one forty next year? Normal. Because my body knows that 150 is my most favorite weight. My body fat's already 10%. Also, I exercise every day, which means I'm giving signals to my muscles that says, he's using them, let him keep it. <laughs> <laughs> my body is going to be resistant in losing weight. So if my body is going to resist losing further weight, what do you think is going to happen? My body temperature will lower to save calories. My respiratory quotient will lower to save calories. I'll be breathing and pumping my heart lower when I'm stiffing at night to conserve calories. And my <laughs> overall effect on the bite thyroid function will go lower. And I'll age slower. My metabolic engine will turn down so I don't lose more weight. It's very hard for me to get my weight to drop. People I cut back on calories, if I, I'd have to drop down by more than 100 calories a day. I'd have to go to excessive caloric restriction to get my weight to drop too low. So I want to eat as little calories as I can without losing my strength and my muscle size. But otherwise, the less is better. So now, and more calories, even from good food, is going to speed up my metabolism and slow the eating process. And now let's go back to your question. What was your question? <laughs> what is too much? Let's see. Well, what's the answer to that? Yes. yes. But, fix if you receive too many calories in your day. I want to keep my count. Yeah, you can eat too much calories. You can eat only calories of any food, but particularly nuts and seeds. A lot of calories would be too much. But I, I eat about three ounces of calories. Of nuts and seeds. I eat about an ounce of each meal. This is my only announcement each meal. I don't meet my caloric needs because I do a lot of exercise every day. I always do something. I'm either running, or with weight, or skiing, or playing tennis, or on mountains. I'm doing something. I'm doing abs and back, or I'm doing arms, or I'm doing legs. I'm doing something every day. I need the extra calories, the extra effort for all the stuff I do. So I only need three ounces of dip. But for a person who's not that physically active, so how much should you eat? That's the art. I'm trying to teach you the art and science of you adjusting your diet to your particular needs to be the best version of yourself. LeBron James <laughs> should be eating an ounce of nuts and seeds like I'm eating. He probably needs much more than that because he's bigger and he's doing more of sports and more athletic activity than I am. And he needs more calories to keep that size and that muscle mass. And he's slim. And a lot of these guys that I've advised and I've talked to, like, and these people following these tennis guys, um, little basketball players, tennis players, skiers, when the Olympics and stuff, are eating the same, are eating more calories. And they should be, because they're doing so much, so much activity, but they're eating the same food. There's more of it, and more nuts and seeds and stuff, more beans, and, you know. Like the, the Vegas did how, like a good example is um, a professional skier named Eric Schloppy, who I haven't heard of doing four Olympic Games. Four Olympic Games means he was at the top of the world in down with steam for 16 years. All right. He maintains that led power as he got older, like Tom Brady and LeBron James and Djokovic and better, all these top athletes who watch what they eat and they eat their vegetables and they carry their vitamins. And he said, Eric said, that he carries and eats so healthy because he makes millions of dollars based on how healthy he eats. <laughs> <laughs> because he does because if you're gonna get sick in the winter time, get colds and flus, and people coughing you to travel and play, it's not gonna be at the top of the world. It's not gonna be at the top of the best of the world. You're sick out of you out of competition a few weeks here and there, and all of a sudden your performance is dead. You know? Even when you're younger. These guys who are what I really love about athletes is they're so motivated to take good care of their health. 
because they're so enthusiastically dedicated to being the best of them. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So they'll eat like sawdust. He doesn't have to go. If you come in, they'll eat glue the get broccoli sprouts. They're putting the broccoli sprouts in. So after they get sick on a plate, and they're still able to not you know, They're so motivated. To, and I and admire that. That's why I like, well, I like watching <laughs> professional basketball because these they're not just making money. They're doing it to see their hearts in it. They, they're really into it. You know what I mean? They're giving it their all. That's what you got to do. You've got to be dedicated. You've got to be passionate. You've got to give it your all. You've got to figure it out to be the best version of yourself. That they're the top of athletes. This is training for the Olympics of good health. And you are the Olympic athletes being trained with perfection and precision. Precision. You have to... You have to know the amount of nuts and seeds you should be eating with precision. It's not the same as I need, because you've got to know what's the, for your activity level, every calorie should you be eating. You've got to figure this out to get the best version of yourself. No? Are, are you getting enough calories? Actually, you know, calories burn, calories, you know, to, to, to get your 1500. No, the 1500, I was just giving that as an example. This easy number to math mathematically. I don't really. Um, I do more exercise, so I require more than 1,500. If I put my basal metabolic rate without exercise, I think it's pretty close to 1,500. But with exercise, we've got to have a little more. Yeah. But yeah, but I, I'm figuring out, I'm on this just like you are. I'm the bar, sleeping and trying to figure out how much I should eat at dinner time, how much I should eat at lunch on the time of dinner. But we didn't watch not the dinner, so we played at lunch. We had lunch. I got a three meals a day, and I go away to breakfast, and I'm going to get up lunch. I go to school, I got to come back to breakfast. So that, so this is the art of trying to perfect it. And you're trying to perfect it. So it's socially, I would try to remind us of the chewy food better, and to eat a big salad, but mix the greens. We're trying to get this perfected. And so you've got to go home and figure out what they're doing wrong, and how you can perfect it better. 